This is everything you need to know about Olympic ticketing. My new series on taking you through all the ins and outs of Olympic ticketing so you can learn the best tips and tricks to get the Olympic tickets that you want and understand the overall environment in which Olympic ticketing happens because it's very complicated. My name is Ken Hanscom and many of you know me from my five things to know for Tokyo 2020, a weekly series where I cover all of the events and news happening on the road to Tokyo 2020 here in the year 2021. So as we get started in this new series, today I'm going to cover the first and most basic items, which is the Olympic ticket allocation, as well as my background and why I know a little bit about Olympic tickets. So let's get on to the first part here. When it comes to Olympic ticketing, I, like many of you, have attended my fair share of events. Just in the last couple of Olympics, first with Rio 2016, I attended over 33 events in the 17 days. At Pyeongchang 2018, again, uh, went to over 30 events during that, that event. And then now as we look towards Tokyo 2020, in the effect that there are fans as currently is, is expected there in Tokyo 2020, I'll attend another 30 events. Now, a few of you may say, well, wait, I'm sure Ken gets free tickets. People give him tickets. He either buys expensive packages, and so it's really easy. But to tell you the truth, I have not bought a single package or hospitality package in my history. I've gotten all of my tickets for the most part on an individual basis, whether it's via lottery, via on sale, and, and other ways to get them even through some of the resale sites that have popped up in recent years. So as I talk about that and we go through this series, you're gonna hear about a lot of those experiences that have really built the knowledge around what is and everything you need to know about Olympic ticketing. The other thing is my company, what we have done and what I've done in the past is I've overseen Olympic ticket sales for many countries. And as part of that, we've seen how those sales happen, we understand how they happen, and that's pretty consistent across a number of different countries, as well as in the countries where it happens. So that's a little bit of my background and why I'm here to tell you about everything you need to know about Olympic ticket. The main concept I'm gonna talk about today is the Olympic ticket allocations. And I'm gonna focus on summer games in terms of the quantity of tickets because it is larger than the, than the winter games, but generally the principles are still the same. And when we talk about Olympic ticketing, the process you know, basically starts like this, is as part of a bid process, a given city, country, organization wins that bid. So when we look at Tokyo 2020, there's a Tokyo 2020 organization called uh, the Tokyo Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games, and they oversee all of the Olympics, including ticketing. But as part of that, there are a couple core concepts and specifically three areas where all those tickets are distributed. And so when you first think about the host country gets 70, roughly 70% 70 of the tickets. It can range anywhere between 65 and 80 to be between the certain situations. But as a general barometer, somewhere in that 70% range is what, where all those tickets are. And then there's other ways that, in terms of how those tickets actually get allocated out, which ones are on sale for hospitality, for otherwise. I'll talk about that in a future video series, but in one bucket, we basically have 70% of the tickets are being distributed to the host country. The next bucket goes to the IOC, or the International Olympic Committee, and that's roughly can range anywhere between you know, seven and 17%. It really depends. Different games have different allocations, and it is a negotiation over time, and oftentimes it's in the host, host contract in terms of that. But that allocation specifically goes to the IOC to distribute how they want to distribute them. And I'll talk in a future video about how they specifically do that. And then the last 20 to 20% 20 or so goes out to the international community. So when the, the tickets are happening, when the, the event is happening in a place like Tokyo, when we look at this year and what's expected to happen in Tokyo 2020, 20% of those tickets go to all the other countries for them to distribute. So for example, here in the United States, um, we get a portion of that 20%. And that 20% is distributed through what's called an authorized ticket reseller or ATR. In the United States, the ATR happens to be CoSport. And it's for some other countries, it's a company called Cartan and another, uh, and there's some, a couple other companies like uh, Kingdom Sports and another list I'll also cover in a future video. So when you think about overall Olympic uh, ticket allocations, and when there's roughly 7 million tickets for an event, this is really how it lays out, right? 70% or roughly 5 million of those tickets are for Japan, the host country. 10% 
10 to 15%, somewhere around that 700,000 to a million are for the IOC and for their distribution. And then 20% or roughly 1.4 million are then distributed globally and each of those countries determine in coordination with the Tokyo Organizing Committee how those are distributed. At the highest level, when we talk about Olympic ticket allocation, that's exactly how it lays out. In my next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit, start going through the individual areas and how they allocate those tickets. So tune in for me next time on the next part of everything you need to know about Olympic ticketing.